Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and today we're going to take a look at History Maker Baseball. Now this is a very, very um, statistical, analytical thing to look at baseball. There's a lot of these out there from Status Pro Baseball. This is one I haven't heard of or I had um, until a year ago I had never heard of them. Um, but it's a thing that comes with, here's a nice little score sheet to keep track of everything that's going on. And it's going to be revolving around a book here of stats and things like that. Some of you are already running to the hills. I get it. This is not for everybody. This is a game that you can play against other people, or you can, like I do, just put it together some teams solo and play them and see what happens. So let's take a look at how this game works. Now there's a lot that goes into this. But I'm going to just show you the highest basic level so you can see if it's something that you might be interested in. Like here we have some umpires. I picked them and put them on these different spots. They have some, this guy's strict and sometimes questionable, respect it, whatever. This will come into play occasionally over the course of the game. And that's one thing you learn about this game is occasionally things may happen. There's some things that are going to happen all the time, but there's things that will happen once in a blue moon. Now you're going to, the game comes with a bunch of cards here that you got to tear out yourselves. Some very famous players here. You see Billy Martin, Whitey Ford, uh, Phil Rizzuto, Billy Hunter, so on and so forth. I was given an extra set of cards. And so these are, this is from a, a league that only existed in uh, just a couple years. So I'm using them because they look a little nicer. But what happens here is, each person, you'll notice there's no numerical stats on these cards. So Jim Campbell here, a catcher from the Denver Grizzlies, is has for his batting, he is has utility, eager, and whiffer. Those are three different things, and a book explains how they were given to somebody. For running, he's stoic. For experience, he's prospect. And he has nothing for fielding. And you can see each person's going to have that. Sometimes they have a dot in front of them. That means that happens about half the time and you roll this die to see if it does or not. Um, each side also has a pitcher who's going to have the same batting stuff, but they also have a couple of pitching keywords too. Now this is going to matter because you're going to be using this game action booklet here to play the game. And there's some drama in here, but you're going to be mostly looking at pages four and five in this book. So let's focus in here a little bit and show how a typical game of this work. So there's some other things you can play with, you know, the, the, how sunny it is outside. You know, there's a game day weather effects chart and game day injuries and hot cold batters, but I'm just showing you the regular inning. So first, first up. Okay. So, uh, first up we have Jim Campbell, he's batting and the uh, opposing pitcher here is Fritz Ackley here, the starting picture. So I'm going to roll these three dice and I'm going to put them in order here from the smallest die to the largest, and I get four, five, and six. So four, five, and six is here. There's, I always look at the pitcher column first. Here there's nothing, so I go to the batter column, and it asks, oh, is the batter patient? So I look, the batter is not patient. So I ignore that, if he had been patient, he would have got a base on balls, a walk. Since he's not, it's a fly out to center field. So I remember that that's a fly out to center field. I give the person one out and you can keep track of outs and different people who's on first. They have little tokens here. Although of course I upgraded those little dudes running around the bases. Now normally that would be one out and we'd be done. But you'll notice that that was a color purple that fly out. So now I go to team chemistry because that activates this mini chart. I just roll two dice here, a four and a six. The pitching, is the pitching team have dissonance? Let's say they don't. The pitchers distract it. Allows base and balls otherwise. Infield drama. So infield drama means I go down to this one and roll for the next at bat. I get a 2-4. Second baseman, gold. So I'll look at him. No, he's not. Therefore, he bobbles a ball. The batter is safe at first on an error. So the next batter, Bobby, third baseman, gets on base on an error. Okay, so there's one out and one error. The next person comes to bat. We're back to these normal charts here. So we roll these dice. A 3-4-5. So I look here. Is the pitcher iron? So you're going to be constantly taking a look at the pitcher. Um, this pitcher is not iron. He's flash and sometimes wild. So again, since he's not iron, I ignore that, the three, four, five. If it had been, oh, I'm sorry, that's a, is the catcher iron? Ooh, well, we should look at that. So we'll take a look at the catcher from the other team. And no, he's not iron. So it's a, 
that he would be a base on balls otherwise. So then we look. Does the batter have a good eye? He does not have a good eye. So therefore, it's just a strikeout. And since strikeout's in blue, that means the next time I go here and do baseball right now. That's kind of it. You're just going to be constantly rolling on this chart. Now, I rolled some pretty weird rules. Usually, you're going to be rolling on these smaller ones here. And you'll see a lot of times, you know, the Skyliner's pitcher here is flash and wild. Sometimes there's flash and wild. There's a lot of wilds here. He might get a base on balls and stuff. That, that might happen because the pitcher is wild. And a lot of times, this stuff will line up with the batter also. Sometimes things cause infield, outfield, or plate drama. You turn to these mini charts. The colors will require you to turn to these charts here. And then there's also some mini events, which you can go in here, and they'll make you go other events, sometimes a highlight reel to these generational events, which I have never seen happen. I haven't even seen any of these very rare event happens because you'd have to roll one chart to roll to another. But that's basically it. Now, you might say, Tom, what choices are you making? Well, the main choice is you build the team. You look at the players, you decide the player order, you put them in order, and then you kind of just run things. You can decide when to replace a starting pitcher with a relief pitcher and things like that. The game also comes with a deck, and I haven't torn this out of this sheet, but these are like manager things. You can attempt to bunt and do a pep talk, manager influence, dugout chatter. You can play these over the course of the game, and you can ch choose to use these or not. But you're mostly, mostly putting together a team and then kind of running it by rolling the dice and checking on various charts. So there's more to it than that, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how it works. Okay, so again, I, th I feel like this is something that people are going to know going in whether you'll like it or not. I love baseball. I love baseball statistics. I've always wanted to play one of these games. I played some very simple ones when I was a kid. I had uh, one where you spun a spinner and they would have home runs and out, you know, it would be the size of the pie chart of the spinner. Um, a lot of them are very much involved in numbers. This one here is interesting because it changes numbers to keywords. And I really like that keyword aspect of the game because if someone it says slugger, they're going to hit more home runs. If it says whiffer, they're going to strike out more often. If they have both, you have to decide whether to use them or not. I certainly understand that this is almost not a game. It's more of a simulation than anything else. And I also realize that I often give garbage to war gamers who have these very long and complicated charts. And uh, yeah, I will say, though, that you are mostly stuck on pages four to five with the occasional flip to the next page and the occasional flip to the last page. And you don't have to do much more than that. You move the bases around. I will also say that as I went through this, it plays exactly like I would expect a major league baseball game to play. I like it. For me, this is an 8 out of 10. This is something that I have a lot of fun doing because I like to sit down. I like to build a team. I like to build a team of players. I'm a big fan of old school baseball, and I know all these old time players, putting them together. They even have a section in the book where you could take a baseball card, look at the stats, and using those stats, it tells you what keywords to give that player. I haven't done that yet, but that sounds fun. I played this against somebody else, but I've also played it mostly solo, and I, was, I just had a good time with that rolling dice and seeing what happens. Yeah, you kind of just follow the things and see, but it's just, there's something about it. This does not attract everybody. This also does not mean, folks, I'm going to play every single one of these that are out there because there's a lot of these baseball strategy games out there. I don't have time to get to them, but I do have time to get to this one because how easy it was to get into. Now, I do realize that the quality of this is not great. I don't like to tear out cards, you know, but... They did have this like another set of cards, and I was able to use those. I only had to tear out a few cards for person of this game. I do like that this book here, Spiral Bound, this was very easy to work with. The rules, uh, less good. I was not, um, I, I learned to play some of the basic stuff from the folks when I was at their booth, and I'm glad I didn't have to learn from this book. You can. But this book should start out by basically giving you the basics and then walking through and no, they're like, now, what's the weather like? I'm like, why would you start with that? You know, but if you like baseball and baseball stats, you like those old timey games, this might be one that's up your alley. But again, realize it's a simulation. But if you like baseball, and you like numbers, maybe you don't like baseball, and you just like numbers, you might still enjoy this. So that's History Maker Baseball. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.